So these settings make it possible to shoot like this. So in season 20, you've just got everybody copying their pro players, just using the same 4-3 linear settings that they use. But these settings that I'm going to show you today are much better than those 4-3 linear settings. And I've used these to hold top 10 a few times, and I've used them to hold top 50 on PC as well. So today, I'll just show you all of these crucial settings, and I'll tell you why they're the best for season 20. So to start off, underneath the gameplay tab, you want to go to Interact Prompt Store. Then on this, you want to put Compact, because that'll stop visual clutter while losing. Then we've got Button Hints. You can put that as whatever you want, really, because it's just preferential. So I've got mine on. It's the same with cross side damage feedback as well. You can put it as whatever you want. And I've got mine set as X with shield icon. Uh, damage numbers. Now you want to set this as stacking. Just so there's no confusion if you're calling that damage to your teammates. Then ping capacity. You want to put this on default because you want to be seeing those pings clearly. A bit is your kill feed, so keep this on. Uh, mini map rotation. Now I have mine off, but if you like yours on, then go for it. It's not really going to make much of a difference. Now weapon auto cycle on empty. You want this off because... You want to be switching weapons yourself, you don't want the game doing it for you. Then auto sprint, you want this on because it makes some movement mechanics way easier to pull off. A double tap sprint, turn this off, you just don't need it man. It's way too easy to activate so you'll end up activating that accidentally. Then jetpack control, now this is for Valk mains, this is, and I've never been a Valk main so I can't really give you any advice on that. Then incoming damage feedback, now I've got mine set as 3D but you can change yours to whatever you want really because you're not going to suddenly turn into a bronze player if you change it to something else. Then taking damage close to death boxes. Now you want to turn this off because if you leave it on then you're not going to be able to armor swap during fights. Then we've got off screen portraits. Just turn this off to stop a bit of visual clutter. Then hop up pop up literally makes no difference so just spin a wheel on that one. A streamer mode hides other people's names and anonymous mode hides your name so you can set these as whatever you want really because it's not going to impact your skill level. A usage sharing that's just your privacy that's up to you. Then performance display so if you keep this on then in the top right corner of your screen you'll be able to see you like your FPS and your ping in there and you better monitor if you get any frame drops and lag spikes so I do think that you should keep this on. Then communication filter, I ain't exactly sure what this does but I know it's not going to affect your skill level so you can set this as whatever you want. Then reticle, so the default colour is red and you want to keep it on this because your eyes are able to differentiate red better than any other colour so you just want to keep it on default. Then it's exactly the same reason with laser sight. Then colourblind mode, I've got mine off but Obviously, if you find it odd seeing certain colours, then change it to whatever you feel comfortable with. But then the rest of this stuff don't really matter. I mean, you can turn subtotals off though, because that's way too off putting in my opinion. But anyway, once you've done that, just go over to the controller tab and click button layout. Then scroll down and select customised. Now, this is where you can change all of your controls. And so if you're one of those people who hold the controller normally, without playing claw or having paddles, then you would actually be able to use this button layout, but if you do play claw or have paddles, then that will slightly help out. So to start off, most people set their jump as A, which would be X on PS. And the reason I don't like this is because it's too close to the right analog stick in my opinion. So when you're bunny hopping or jump spamming, it makes your accuracy worse. So I always set mine as B instead, which would be circle on PS. And the reason I do this is because it's further away from the right analog stick, so it makes your accuracy when you jump spamming better. But anyway, then we've got crouch set as right stick. Now, the reason we do this is because it makes your crouch spamming a lot better, because you don't have to move your thumb off the right analog stick at all. Then we've got interact, pick up and reload. Now, you want to set this as your RB button, which would be R1 on PS, because it makes reloading a lot quicker, and it also allows you to do zipline movement as well. Then cycle weapon and holster. Now just keep this as Y, which would be triangle on PS, because your thumb can move pretty quickly to that button anyway. Uh, keep the aim down sword and attack both on default. There's no need to change any of them either. Tactical. Now put this as your left stick, because it makes using your tactical way quicker. And I've got ping set as X, which would be square on PS, and that makes using your ultimate easier. And um, we'll put sprint and melee both on the D-pad because they're just not important buttons compared to the others. Um, healing, I've put this on LB which would be L1 and PS because you're able to click it slightly faster and that slight quicker healing time in a gunfight does actually make a big difference. Um, extra character action, so I've put it on A which would be X on PS but you can swap it around with melee if you want. I mean extra character action is useless anyway so you don't even need it. Um, Tug of 4 and a quick grenade. Now, both of these just aren't as important as you've seen, so just whack them on the D-pad. And the map button I've just kept on default. But with this button layout here, you're able to do every single movement mechanic in the game apart from tap strafe. But once you've done that, just back out your button layout and go to your stick layout. Then you want to set this as default because you want to be moving with your left stick and aiming with your right stick. And I've never knew anybody use anything else. Anyway, interact and reload button. Now, set this as tap to use and reload because you don't want to be holding anything down because that takes way too long. Okay, the crouch button. So, I know a lot of you have got it on toggle, but I do think that you should put it on hold because it makes things like bunny hopping, for example, just way easier to do. Uh, the aim button, just put this on hold as well because you got to be some kind of bot to be using toggle on there. A survival button button. So, I've turned mine off because I like to crap on a cause in game, but if you don't really care about doing that, then you can always leave this on. Uh, adaptive triggers. So, 
I think this is something to do with a DualSense controller, but I don't even have one, so I've turned this off. Uh, trigger dead zones, just set this as none, just so your triggers are more responsive. Uh, menu cursor speed, so you want to set it about here, roughly, because if you set it too high, then it's going to be too quick for you, and you'll end up a lot missing things like armor swaps. But if you set it too low, then it'll take you about two decades to loot a death box, so set it about here and you should be over it. Then sensitivity, so I know a lot of you players use full free linear, because that's what most of the pro players use, and... To be fair, it gives you a lot of aim assist up close, but I just think it's outdated now because when it was back introduced into the meta back in Season 10, you didn't have as many people tap strafing, wall bouncing, super glides, all of that movement stuff. And that's why I switched to 4 5 Classic because you can track people better, because you can move your right analog stick quicker, and you can have better recoil control at range as well, so you can keep up with those mouse and keyboard players. Like, say if I pick up this devotion here and I shoot this target, there's no way on earth you can control the recoil like that on 4 3 linear, it's just impossible. You're only able to do that on 4 5 Classic, so in my opinion, it's just a better sense overall. The only thing you're trading off is a bit of aim assist, but in my opinion, it's worth it 100%. Now, per optics, so I have tried to turn these on and use them, but with a 4 5 sensitivity, you just don't need to. Uh, response curve, Classic. I've already said why Classic's better. Um, look dead zone. Now, you want to set this to none so that like, your right stick is more responsive, but if you do see yourself getting stick drift, then change it to small instead. Then movement dead zone, so I'll put it on small as well for the exact same reason, because of responsiveness. Uh, inverted look, now you want to turn this off because you don't want to be pushing up and looking down, that's just backwards. Uh, vibration, turn that off as well because that's just way too distracting. And advanced look control, so I've got mine turned off, but if you want to learn more about those, then watch my last video. Okay, then we've got the video tab, and if you're on console, then you won't see most of this stuff here, so you might as well skip ahead to the audio section. But if you're on PC, then you'll see all of it and this will be useful to you. Okay, so display mode. So you always want to set this as full screen because that makes your game run the smoothest, always. Um, aspect ratio, now I've put mine as 16.9 and I have tried different ones in the past, like stretch res and that. And to be fair, stretch res makes your lot accuracy a bit better because you can see character models bigger. But it also looks really ugly and it's just off-putting, so I went back to 16.9. Uh, resolution, I've got mine set as 1920x1080 because that's what my monitor is. Then brightness, I have mine on 50% because I think if you set it higher than this then it gets a bit too blurry. If you set it lower then it gets a bit too dull and you can't see anything so I think 50% is the perfect balance. Then FOV, so you all want to set this to 110 because if you set it any lower then you're going to be getting shot from angles that you can't even see. Then FLV ability scaling, just disable that as well because you don't want your screen changing when you're using abilities. Then sprint view shake, so you want to change this to minimal because if you don't then your screen's going to shake a bit too much when you're sprinting. Then under the advanced tab, so I've got everything maxed out but depending on your PC specs you might want to lower some things. I mean either way, none of this is going to make you play better in game anyway, it's just look for visuals pretty much. One thing that I will say though is that you see that adaptive super sampling sitting there, make sure that you turn that off because if you keep it on, then you're going to drop frames, no matter what kind of PC you've got. Okay, then we've got the audio tab, so a lot of this stuff here don't really matter, but I'll go over some of it quickly anyway. So we've got the master volume, I've got mine set as 100%, but obviously if it's blowing your eardrums off, then you might want to set it a bit lower. Then all this stuff here don't matter. Um, sound effects volume, okay, so you always want to set this at 100%, just so that you can listen to it for enemy sound effects. Um, dialogue volume, so with this, you want to set it slightly lower than sound effects volume, so like 90% or something, because you still want to be able to hear this audio, because this is the audio what your, like, your teammate's character to be saying. So for example, if your teammate gets shot at, his character will say, I'm getting shot at by a third party or something like that, and that's something that you need to be listening out for. Then we've got music volume and lobby music volume. Both of these settings don't even matter, though. that's just preferential. Um, sending background, now if you're on PC, you'll have this setting here called sending background, and you want to turn this on just so that you can listen out for what's happening in your game if you're tabbed out. So for, so for example, if you're tabbed out and you're getting shot at, then you'll be able to hear that and you might have more time to react. But yeah, that brings us to the end of the video anyway. And with all of these settings here, like I said before, you're going to be able to super glow, bunny up, wall bounce, all of that stuff. And your recoil control is going to be top tier all the time as well, but it might take a bit of time to get used to. And if you have tried these settings and have helped you out, then just let me know in the comments. And I'd appreciate you a lot if you drop me a like as well. But yeah, man, other than that, I'll see you all in the next video.